In this video, we will show you how to replace your fuel injector. On this Nissan Altima, you'll have four of these located along the backside of your engine. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing we need to do is remove our fuel cap. We'll give this a quick inspection and we can set this aside. Now let's make our way under the hood. Under the hood, we're looking along the driver's side of our air filter box. You're going to find a rectangular housing here. It has four locking clips. Just carefully try to press those away from this and then you should be able to lift it up. As you lift this up, keep in mind there is wiring under the area and we don't want to cause any damage, but we do have to look for the legend. Looking down under this area, we're looking at all the different fuses. I'm looking for the fuel pump fuse. It's a 15 amp and it's right in between all of these 10 amp fuses. You really can't mix it up. At this point, we'll continue on to removing that one 15 amp fuse. When you do so, you want to be extremely careful not to be grounding out against anything while you remove it. Use some long nose pliers for this if necessary. With that fuse removed, let's try to start the vehicle. Now we'll carefully reinstall that fuse. When you do so, you want to make sure you put it in the exact same position that you had removed it. Press it in as far as possible, give it a quick inspection, and reinstall your plastic cover. Make sure this is secure and then make your way over to your negative battery terminal. Use your 10 millimeter. We'll loosen up our mounting nut here. You only need to loosen it enough that you can give this a little wiggle and remove it. We'll give it a quick inspection, make sure you don't see any corrosion, and we can set that aside, making sure that it's making no contact over here. Up in the engine compartment, we'll continue on to removing the engine cover. You'll find that it has three 10 millimeter headed bolts, one here and two over on the passenger side. Now, as you go to lift this up, you're going to find that you have a locating tab in the center here that will want to hold this down. Just carefully reach under and give it a light tug straight up. We'll set this aside. At this point, looking along the backside of the engine, you do have a clear view of the fuel rail, which houses the fuel injectors, but we have to do a little bit more digging so we can start removing it. Let's start by removing this hose from the top of the valve cover. You'll find that it has a clamp. You can squeeze that in, slide it up, remove the hose from the valve cover. We'll just give it a quick inspection, make sure it's soft and pliable. At this point, you can twist this off to the side and out of the way. With the cover out of the way, we have a clear view of the fuel rail back along here, which houses each one of those fuel injectors. We'll have to do a little bit more digging to get them out of place. Let's start by dislodging our wiring harnesses along the backside here so we can have a little bit of slack from this area. You'll find that this one has a clip that you can grab on each side of and pull it out of place. There's that one. At this point, we'll follow this over to this area, dislodge this as well. You can use a trim tool if needed. Now let's continue on with the wiring. We do not need to dislodge it from the valve cover here, but you do need to follow each one of these wiring harnesses down to where it connects onto the fuel injector. For the fuel injector, it will have a locking tab along the bottom of that connector that you'll be squeezing in with your index finger. Give it a little squeeze and pull it straight rearward. Once you have it disconnected, just give it a quick inspection for corrosion. Now we can start dislodging the fuel rail from the back side of the engine. You're going to find that you have two 10 millimeter headed bolts holding the fuel rail down. We'll carefully remove each one of those two bolts. There's one in this area right here.
Let's remove any debris from the area with compressed air. Now you can reach back here and you should be able to wiggle your fuel rail around. When you have movement from this area, we'll continue on by prying this up and out diagonally. By prying, you want to be extremely careful because we will be pressing up against the valve cover and the valve cover is only plastic. If you're using a pry bar like I am here, use a rubber hose or some tape and try to make a cushion. At this point, we'll apply a little bit of pressure and start wiggling this around as we do so. You can start from the center or one side or the other. Either way, just be careful not to break anything as you go. Now, since we're being careful not to damage the valve cover itself, if you find that you're having a hard time lifting this up and out of place, you can lubricate it using a little bit of parts cleaner along each one of the fuel injectors. Now we can start lifting this up and out of place. Of course, one of the fuel injectors did happen to come off of the fuel rail, that's common. We'll tilt this up so it stops flowing out of there. With the fuel rail up and out of the area, the next thing we'll do is continue on to removing the fuel injector from the fuel rail. You'll find that each one of these fuel injectors is held in place with a metal clip. You can easily remove these clips using a small pick or small screwdriver. Along each side, just gently start prying it out and away. While prying one side out, continue on on the other side. We'll slide this out of place, give it a quick inspection, and we'll set it aside. We will be reusing this. At this point, we'll continue on to taking hold of the fuel injector. We'll give it a little twist and start lifting it up and out of here. Once again, we're paying attention to the fact there could be fuel in this area. And there it is, friend. All right, let's get ready for installation of our brand new fuel injector. We'll take a thin amount of oil and just come right around each one of the O-rings. Once you have these lubricated, we can continue on by applying the side that's closest to the wiring harness connector into the fuel rail here. We want to make sure we have the connector facing in the same direction as all others. Align your two locating tabs. Reinstall your metal clip. To install this clip, you want to find the groove that's in the fuel injector itself and slide the clip through it on both sides. We'll press that in as far as possible and make sure it's completely seated. Give it a little squeeze. Once you feel as though it's in there, continue on to taking hold of it and give it a wiggle. We're trying to lift it up and out of position. If it falls out, you know the clip isn't in correctly. This one feels good. Continue on doing the exact same thing to each and every fuel injector. Now the next thing we'll have to do is have a look along the back side of the engine here. We're looking for each one of the ports where those fuel injectors go down and into. You want to make sure there isn't any debris in these areas. Continue on with a rag, just go ahead and give it a little twist and slide it in there. What? Let's take the fuel rail and put it back in position here. As we swing it down in position, you want to be careful for all of the gaskets. We don't want anything to fall over. Carefully start putting this in position. Once you think you have everything completely aligned, just double check to make sure you don't have any of your connectors underneath the fuel rail. We don't want anything getting caught or damaged. At this point, we'll continue on to pressing the fuel rail and fuel injectors down into the proper position. After that, you can continue on with your two 10 millimeter mounting bolts.
Once you feel as though you have it pressed into position, continue on to taking hold of that fuel rail. Try to lift those fuel injectors up and out of position. Assuming they are stuck down into that engine, we'll continue on with our two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. Start them in, snug them up, torque them to 18 foot pounds. Let's reconnect our fuel injectors. Line them up, press them in, listen for a click, give them a tug to make sure they're secure. Now let's secure the wiring harnesses to their mounting points. Let's reattach our hose. Let's reconnect our negative battery terminal. Slide that down into position. Use your 10 millimeter, make sure it's nice and tight. All right, let's get ready to install our engine cover. As you remember, when we had removed it, we had that rubber area that needs to fit onto this mount. Just try to align that. Once you feel as though you have it aligned, gently press it on. Continue on to all three of your mounting bolts. Okay, friend, we've got our fuel injector installed. The next thing that you want to do is go ahead and start up the vehicle, check for leaks, and then take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.